Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Autumn. I make videos about self-love, spirituality, and re-becoming our most authentic true self. And I'm coming to you today from my very empty room in New Mexico. I just made a really big transition from my home in Maui, where I was for three years, to my new home in New Mexico, where I'm going to be until I'm not here anymore. And so much is alive within me about this transition. So much beauty, so much excitement, so much newness, and a lot of grief, a lot of death, a lot of feeling scared and unsure and having to really be with myself in this newness, in this very, very empty room. And right before I moved, I pulled the card from the Wild Unknown Archetype deck that was called The Empty Room, which talked about, you know, the, inf the really infinite possibility of having a new space. There's so much potential. And at the same time, we are continuously looking to fill the void, to fill the emptiness, to run away from the space, the spaciousness, that feeling of uncertainty, that feeling of insecurity, that feeling of, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of this. I don't know who I am in all of this. And I am totally in that process right now. And I wanted to speak today on grieving, on mourning, on being in situations that maybe we chose, maybe we did not choose at all, that make us feel sad, that make us feel scared, that make us feel unsure, um, that make us feel like death, or maybe we're experiencing a, a death in our life, a death with people we love, a death within who we've been, how we've identified. I know for myself, there's been this huge grounded identification within Maui like I live in Maui and I am a Maui girl and this is a part of who I am and what feels comfortable for me and I have all of my sisters in my community and my house and I feel grounded and supported and held by this being called Maui this entity this presence that I have made my home and at, during this transition, I've been thinking about when I first moved to Maui and how terrified I was and all the things that went wrong and how truly afraid I was to, to be there on my own. And then by the end of the three years, how comfortable and thriving and at home I was. And just a three years, how much can change, how much community can be built, how grounded I became. And now again, this like transplant, this uproot, going to a new place, and I'm feeling these same feelings of uncertainty, of fear, of loneliness, of emptiness, of grief, of grief, of sadness, having to sit with myself in these feelings of like uncertainty. Did I make the right choice? Did I do something wrong? Like, what if I would have done this? What if I would have done this? How would I feel now? And I know this energy of grief and death and just darkness, this like black hole, this void, this empty room, we all process it different and it comes in different reasons. Like if I had lost a loved one, the grief I feel would be different than having chose to leave Maui to come somewhere new. It's a different kind of process, yet the feeling of crumbliness is the same. And it's been a really big part of my practice to want to like pivot out of the darkness to want to be like okay here's this feeling here's this discomfort I see you I feel you and now let's move on let's move into something else let's make money let's create something new let's do something let's fill this empty space with something that is going to help me feel less sad that's going to be lighter that's going to be brighter that's more high vibration that's five dimensional but in reality, like there's this piece of me that has been just wanting to feel her sadness, that's wanting to feel the, her grief. And I'm looking at that balance between like, what about those moments when it just does hurt? And you don't want it to not hurt because you did love what is now not there. 
You loved what was not there. You loved so much what is now not here that you get to hold this space for the, the pain that comes from not being there. And then we can go into the whole idea of non-attachment, right? If I was totally unattached, I wouldn't be who I am and offer the medicine I offer the world. And not that non-attachment and detachment is not a wholly beautiful practice because it absolutely is and I so I get it and I see it. And I think it's beautiful and important at times. And there are times where it just hurts and that's okay. We can just be with the pain and the grief and the sorrow and the uncertainty and the emptiness because we are human and death exists here on this plane. Death exists here. And that is not a bad thing. It's just a thing. And it has its own emotions. And those emotions aren't bad things. They're just a thing. So when I'm feeling this, this sorrow, this pain, crying over the smallest things, not even knowing why, just because I feel so like, oh, tender and vulnerable, because everything's new. There's this piece of me that wants to judge, right? That's like, this is bad. Like, these are not good emotions. This is a bad place to be. You must have done something wrong. Um, how can we make it better? How can we fix it? But in reality, it's just a side effect of moving my whole life and a side effect of following my intuition in this fierce way that I do. And it leaves me raw and tender and with these emotions that are so deep but that exist and that are attached to death, that are attached to death inseparably. And that's so beautiful because if we did not experience death, we would not know life. If we did not experience this, this depth of pain, we would not know like the depth of joy. And it's that constant paradox and polarity that makes existing as a human being so tragic, so beautiful, so fascinating, so romantic, so dramatic, like that's why we're here. And it hurts and it's beautiful <laughs> at the same time. But when it hurts, it, it can hurt. That's what I've been having to grant myself that permission. Like if it hurts right now, it can just hurt right now and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to find a solution and fix it, Autumn. Like you can just be in that empty room in that space that feels so like such a void, like so far away from everything you once knew and you're allowed to mourn that. It's allowed to feel like grief. It's allowed to feel like sorrow. And then in 10 minutes when you have a spark of inspiration or joy or like, ooh, I can do this with my room and there is excitement, that can exist too. It doesn't take away from the sadness that you feel. And I feel like, you know, this is where like that multidimensional self comes in because we are so out of this world. Like we are so bizarre in the way we process and feel and have ideas that lead us to different experiences and excitements and inspirations and intuitions. And it all coexists in this jumbled mess of being a human. And I know for myself, I've been craving recently a lot more like grounding and I want to like do things with my hands, like practical things, like be slow, be on my phone less, be in life more. And I'm not sure how that's going to change how I feel and how I process, but I'm really curious to see. Because I know that when I am looking on my phone or comparing myself to other people's lives, even in a subconscious way, it can lead me with this feeling of, will I ever be who I want to be or where I want to be or in the situations I want to be. Especially in these moments of deep transition and there's so much unknown in every direction. And it's scary and it hurts at times and it feels confusing and uncertain and that's so beautiful. It's so worthy. It's so a part of the holiness, the whole that allows us to exist and I hold an online coven. If you're ever interested, you can find more information on my website, Autumn Brienne, or find me on Instagram at Autumn Brienne. That's where we hub the um, online coven. And ironically enough, this theme for this last round of the coven was Yule, death and rebirth. 
so we had this very beautiful discussion about death and everyone is kind of transition feeling their own micro deaths and some sisters in the coven have never experienced that much death where some are moving through it right now in a very intimate way and the discussion was so rounded so full so bold from everything to you know there cannot be death or there could not be life if there wasn't death and that like death you know doesn't even exist we just transform we just alchemize and the other to the other end of the spectrum that's like death is so it just hurts and that that concept sounds great and like right now it's just pain and how that all exists at once and my practice has been this deep 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 compassion with myself to stay open in my tender little fragile heart that feels like it's falling into pieces and not close even when I'm so open I all I want to do is close to just stay in that empty space in that unknown in that pain and to allow myself to move from there to pick back up each day from that tenderness without shaming it or judging it or thinking that I need to be different or show up different or be somewhere else other than where I am right now. And that even though where I am at right now is this like really tender place that feels kind of painful, that's okay. That's beautiful. That's holy. And that is where I am right now. So thank you all for being here with me today. I'm sending you so much love. I really hope this video spoke to you. I am offering a journey with Rose this coming February where we're going to be sitting and working very intimately with the spirit of Rose, which is perfect timing for me right now as I'm feeling so, so vulnerable and really excited to be open in that and to anchor in compassion and self-love for myself through that. If you are on your self-love journey, wanting to deepen into confidence with your body, your heart, your physical being, your true essence, this is for you and you can find more information in the description box. I have a link to my website and if you have any questions, you can email me, leave a comment here, find me on Instagram. I cannot wait to work with you, to be in sacred space with you, to hold each other through these tender moments of life. It's going to be so beautiful. I love you. I'll see you again very soon. Mwah.